go. I like to say a special dedication out to all my family and friends. Come on, wow. Let's do it again, bad and show. I say we all must huh. go. Alright, alright. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are now entering Let's Do It Again Band and Show. Today we're going to have special guests. My name is Tom Moe, straight out of Southeast Washington, D.C. I'm here to make sure that we get some knowledge and some understanding about the different entrepreneurs that's in the Washington D.M.V. area that's trying to Establish certain businesses, uh, music-wise, comedy-wise, uh, whatever the choices of that you desire to do when you are out here in this world, man, trying to survive. Because we can't just work for somebody all our lives, man. We gotta, we gotta have a bigger picture. We gotta want to be owners. We gotta want to own our own things. We wanna set things up for our kids when they grow up that they don't have to have it hard. It's, it's easy. It's understandable. But today I have a special guest today, which this is my first show. And my special guest today is my son. That's right. My oldest son, Thomas Jr. Yeah. And he most definitely have a lot in store for you all today. Also I have another guest that's been around for a while. It's not my first time meeting him. We done done some things together, but I'm going to let him introduce himself. Y'all already know it's me. One and only, big head, baby. Right there, head. Oh, right here? Okay. Hey, yeah, yeah. It's me. It's big head, you know. Yeah. And what, what's your real name, though? What you go the by? Eric. Eric McGill. Okay, okay. Glad to have you, like Mr. McGill. 
Smoke. Yeah, but I mean, you know, joke, hey, joke I hope ain't nobody looking for you. But anyway, we're going to move forward. <laughs> we're going to have my man Big Head do a little comedy for us later on. Uh, but right now, I want to get into uh, my son, Thomas Jr. Uh, let's let's see where he's have been going in his life and the things that he have accomplished so far. So introduce yourself and then uh, we can take it from there. I'm Thomas C. Bali Jr., better known as TJR. Uh, yeah, the actor. You know, I'm moving, I'm grooving, I'm shining. Okay, so when it when is. when did you first start it thinking that you wanted to be an actor? When did you start pursuing this uh passion that you may have? Well, I, um I always wanted to be an actor. Well, I didn't know I wanted to be an actor. I knew I wanted to be on TV. So, it started out when I was very young. I think I really caught the bug when I was in the 5th grade mm -hmm. and I uh I was in the, the the Wizard of Oz, well, the Wiz. It was, it was oh, the yeah? black version of the Wiz. So, yeah, I was in the fifth grade. You know, I played the Tin Man. I did my thing in that. And I think since then, I just always wanted to go back and be on TV. And uh, it really kicked off, and I really started pursuing it right around 2009. And it's just been, uh, sky's been the limit since then. So you saying in 2009 is when you started back after you did the weird thing? A, yeah, I did a couple things like in elementary school, non-professional, okay. nothing like that. Uh -huh. Then I started to pursue a professional career acting. I was in, in uh, 2009. Oh, okay. Yeah. Me being your dad, I never knew you was the tin man. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, they owe so, me right on now. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm most definitely going to learn some uh, stuff today. But uh -huh. anyway. Um, so when you started in, uh, you said 2000 and... 2009. 2009, you yeah. know, what, what was your first, say, first role? Because I know personally that I didn't see you do uh, live on stage. Right, right, you know? yeah, I started out in theater. I started out in theater, I think you came to that very, f I know you came to that very first show. Um, it was called Virgil's Law. The irony is uh, 10 years later, Virgil's Law is now about to be a, uh, a screenplay, a full-length feature film that I'm actually executive producer of. So, but that was my first uh, professional role. It was Virgil's Law. It's about a new law surrounding uh, capital punishment. It started as a theater play. And uh, we, I performed that all over D.C. and Baltimore, and it did really well. And um, from there, I auditioned for a few other things up and down the East Coast. And... Those things worked out pretty decent for me. I went over to the West Coast, did a couple things over there, and now, you know, I'm just back and forth at this point. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So the first uh, one that I know, I remember I attended, you had to die in that play, mm -hmm. right? And, and and my mother was there, which is your grandmother, but she was there, and she just, she just couldn't she take the part. She that. She didn't like that. Yeah, she didn't like yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, I always had that problem. My grandmother, I played a slave, and she didn't really want to watch that, too. So, yeah, yeah. She know. just she just be <laughs> all over the place emotionally about, why he got to die? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's acting, <laughs> Mom. He's not going to go nowhere. Right I'll be there. back yeah, for dinner. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But then after right. you did that, um, cause I think I, I, I came to another one, too, though. Yeah, I, I came to another one too after you did that one because that was the very first one I seen, yeah. and then you had the other uh, stage play. I'm trying to think what yeah, it I, was. Do I you first remember? Started, I, I don't remember exactly which one it was, but when I first started, that's all I was doing was stage play. I remember at one time I was working on six different shows at one time mm -hmm. between here and New York. So okay. there was a whole bunch of them, man. I I, I can't remember right, exactly right. which I one. Right, right. I understand. I understand. But you know, it's like. I, I've done some acting myself. Of course. Uh, and um, I'm just trying to figure out, like, like our family is based on music. You know what I mean? We, yeah, we're entertainers, absolutely. period. Yeah. But, uh, and that comes from our mom, dads, right. and so forth. But the acting thing, I'm just trying to figure out, will you actually, you know, like, that's your net. That's something that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you, you like music. I do know that. Yeah, absolutely. But. You don't go after music, you're going after acting. I'm like, right. where, that, where that come from? I, well, I couldn't sing real good, so um, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't going to work out. And uh, I tried to be a rapper. You know, that ain't really work out too well for me. So, you know, I got into acting with something that I gravitated to. I always tell this joke. I really was never good at anything. Right. I wasn't good at basketball. I was okay in football. I couldn't sing. I couldn't rap. Right. So when I got into acting and it was jumping off, everybody was like, oh, he great. Was, that, that was crowd. I'm sticking with this. That was my thing. <laughs> yeah, because you know? it, it's work. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going I'm to I'm come over here to uh, my man Big Head and let's 
uh, talk a little bit about your uh, when you first started off at comedy, when you felt like this was the thing you wanted to do. When when did that all start? Man, I was old. You know what I mean? Uh, unlike your the son, TV camera. Right? Unlike your son, I was old. Not the TV, time. the camera. Right there. Right there. Yeah. Okay, right there. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm funny. I'm telling you. Now, what was the question? Man? I was saying, when did you actually know that you wanted to do comedy? When, when did it start? It was like in 2000, I guess, when I lost my job. <clears throat> I was working for Metro Vision Cable, and uh, I had to do something. I said, man, I got I to gotta do something. And then, like you say, I was tired of working for a white man. Excuse my expression, but for real, I was tired. I wanted my own, and I still want my own. So, so you don't think that this may, uh, this may came from when you was a kid in school? You know what I mean? Was you funny in school? You know, I what always mean? was funny. I always yeah. was funny. Yeah, but I ain't realize it until I ran all the money. You know, right. then I ran all the money. Bro. Oh, I'm funny. Yeah. I'm a comedian now. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a comedian there. That's so, how it came from Okay, me. so so you but said. But I was always funny. Yeah. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. Because yeah. I had to start somewhere, not I just never thought after. About, I thought I was going to be a doctor, man. You know oh, what yeah? I'm saying? When I was a little boy, I thought okay. I was going to be a, do- a big head doctor. Right. Man. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong college. with that. Um, <laughs> dang so, dong, dang dong. <laughs> I, I like that. Show. I yeah. like that. So, um, yeah. so, okay, so boom. You... Um, Lost your job, and then you decided, okay, I think I'm funny enough that I can go do stand up. What was your first show? Where did you do your first stand up as a yeah, uh, amateur? Oh, the Comedy Connection Outlaw. Oh, yeah. And you, yeah. Can you remember like who was on that show with you at that time? I think it was like for real, Donnell Rollins. You know, because I started, I've been in comedy for a while. Donnell Rollins is called Ashley Lurd. And uh, I've been in comedy for a while, but I, you know what I mean, took breaks and things of that nature. But now I'm in it, I'm in it to win it because I know I'm funny, for real. Okay, yeah. that's, that's good. So um, do you remember when when me and you met? Because when me and you met, I had you do a comedy show for me when I was with uh, the Twins and yeah. we had the band called Vintage Band. Do you remember that, that show that we did? Outlaw. That was our law. Too. College Park, right? College Park. Yeah. Up in that. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. What was that, like 10 or 15 man, years ago? I, I, I can't even remember, man. Yeah. But I know. But one thing I can respect about you guys, you and the twins, y'all always looked out for, y'all looked out for me, and of course I believe y'all looked out for y'all, y'all race, too. You know, that's what I think. I don't know if that was y'all issue, but y'all always looked out for me. For, for me, and I and I appreciate that. Well, in this in this in this line of business, man, and I always believe myself that it's not to, it's not just for you. You know what I mean? Like once you you get into something, you get started. Then once you get to a certain level, you should be able to reach back on some people that you know that may need that extra help, that extra step. Because in order for un, any of us to be able to accomplish anything, we're going to need help. Yeah, you know, when we grow up, you know, you sometimes you people give you that feedback. You don't need nobody. You can do it by yourself. Right. And and that's false. That's false. You're going to always need help. You're going to always need guidance. You're going to always need somebody that's in front of you to say, hey, come on up here with me, man. I think you got something that's going to work. Most definitely. You know what I mean? Because if we don't pull one another, then we'll always be in one place. You know what I'm saying? We'll always be in one place, man, because... My my music career, like, I started, man, when I was maybe, I'm talking about for real, like, 12, 11. I mean, I, I was playing in clubs. I was in D.C. playing in clubs because my mother was a singer. Yeah. And all the brothers, they, you know, they played guitar. They, they had a band, a family band. And at that age, I was in clubs playing drums, you know. Yeah. That's when I first started playing instruments. I played drums. And when I stopped doing it, I was I was already grown when I stopped playing with them, you know what I mean? But they planted that in me as a child, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's in you. Yeah, you know what I mean? And they was like, you know, just you need to do this. Just like um, being like an architect. Like, I started out very young learning how to do floors and ceramic tile, bathroom tile, all this stuff. But my, my uncles and them taught me these things while I was a kid. 
So it was like they was looking into my future as a man, you're going to need these skills. And that's the thing today, man. We got to reach back. And, you know, you may got nephews or cousins or somebody, man, you know, that may need that help. You follow what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You know, and if you don't reach back and get them home, then they may grow up in, in a lost generation. Yeah. Because, like, right now today, man, the world, man, oh, my God, you know your president? Nah, oh, my. Bump Trump. I mean, I'm just saying <laughs> that, you know, we got to realize as as uh, black men, because there's so many locked up, man. You know, I, I can speak on that highly. There's so many locked up that you got to be a father to a child that's not even yours. It take a village to raise a child. And I'm, and, but I'm know, saying we can say that, but is we actually, man, living that life out here? Right. You know what I'm saying? We got to live that life, man. Because it was somebody that came and got us. It was somebody reached back and grabbed us to say, hey. And that's what I, why I gave the story about my uncle and them. They, they grabbed me as a very young age and said, let me teach you this. Let me teach you that. Let me teach you this. Because these things you're going to need as you get older. You know what I mean? Right. So those skills that I have, is, is, it was from somebody saying, hey, you're going to need this. You know what I mean? Now, yes. with, when it comes down to me and the twins and the music and all that, man, we always try to get people a hand. We always try to bring somebody in to, uh, you know, better us as well as better in themselves. Well, that's a good thing, Tom. You know what I mean? But, yeah. it, but it's all about, it's not about self. It ain't about it's self. If we get back, yeah, man. man. If you get caught up on self, you can you can be a millionaire and be by yourself. Money don't make you happy. Right. Money make you exist and be able to do things, pay bills, have certain things, man. That's what money do. And some people, you know, like get the wrong understanding when when the the Bible says that uh, money is the root of all evil. Money is not the root of all evil. It's how you use that money. Is where you use that money is that you can turn it into evil. You know what yeah. I'm saying? No. But I don't want to get too far on that right there because I'll talk about that on another segment. Let's get back to my son, Thomas Jr. Yeah. So I know that um, you did your, your, your stage stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's get into when you start doing actual film. Yeah. What was your very first film that you uh, did? My very first film was a film probably nobody ever heard of. Probably nobody will ever hear of unless they watch it now. It's called Amateur Hour. Okay. That was my very, very first paid project. Um, we shot it in the outskirts of Virginia over the course of maybe three weeks. It was an independent project. Uh, the funny thing, I was the only African American on the project. Okay. I mean, from the cast to the crew, it was just me. Right. So it was a, it was definitely a, a culture shocking um, experience for me. But I enjoyed it. I stay in contact with uh, one of the guys from the project now, still, and um, it was a good experience. It, 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 it was good. I enjoyed. Let me it. ask you this: Is yeah. that the project where you was the guy? Because um, I remember you showed me a clip of this. Um, Mm -hmm. When you was the guy that was behind the, the cage or something, you was computer guy or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. So it was supposed to be like a like a, uh, a Ocean's Eleven type oh, of movie, okay. and I was okay. playing like the Don Cheadle curry, oh, okay. uh, character. Uh -huh. So I was like the tech guy. We, we were supposed to be staging a heist, and it was, but it was uh, it was almost like a parody. So it was supposed to be a very comical. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like unexperienced trying to stage this whole heist, and it was uh, it had some dry, it had a lot of dry humor in there, but it was it was a good experience. So what you think that why it never you know was it money uh, issues? What? Yeah, well, a lot of money things and the way they put it together. It was some first time filmmakers. I'm not saying that all first time filmmakers make that mistake, but they made just a lot of mistakes, and the movie really wasn't marketable. Right. Uh, they was on a, a very minuscule budget. It, it wasn't ready, okay. but it, it it was a cool. I still have the film, you know right. what I mean. But uh, it, it wasn't ready. So what, what you, from there, then you did what? From there, I kept auditioning. I think my next project after that was a project called um, what was it? What was it? What was it? It was I shot it in New Jersey. It was called House of Malik. It was another project. That project actually had some uh, celebrity name attachments on it and everything. But again, making films, you know, all of these projects that I started off, I think, helped me 
grow and build because I think like my first three projects never left the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so we shot this film. It was supposed to be shot half of it in New Jersey, in Camden, New Jersey. And we shot most of those parts, and they came out pretty good. And the other half was actually supposed to be shot in Osaka, Japan. Okay. Um, but again, financing mm -hmm. and you know just 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 lack of expertise mm -hmm. was there, and uh, you know that film never took off either. But it was a great experience. I met a lot of good people, and years down the road, some of the people that I met on that project, I actually met on one of my biggest projects that I did to, to this day. It was actually my first big project. It was a period piece called The North Star. Uh, I know a lot of people probably seen that. It's still on uh, Xfinity and Comcast. It's on uh, video on demand right now. If you put it in The North Star, you'll see it. Uh, myself, Clifton Powell, Lynn Whitfield, John Deal, um, Keith David. It's a good project. So that, all those failed projects led up to that project. Right. And then when I got that project, that led to me opening doors with BET. Okay, well, well I don't want you to go too fast. Okay. I want to save right. something for them. Okay, okay, you know, all right. But I, okay. but, but for I got my, excited there. Right, I see. <laughs> yeah. I see you ready to take off. <laughs> but, uh, right, what I, what I want to do is we get ready to take a break. Mm -hmm. But what I want to do is uh, give you this number, 24091, I mean 719-2560. That's 240-719-2560. If you have any questions that you want to ask Thomas Jr. about, maybe you want to get into the movie business. Uh -oh. Maybe some things you want to ask him about. If it's some questions you may want to uh, talk to uh, my man Head about, sure, yeah. uh, just feel free, yeah. man. The, the call is in. The lines are open. Uh, we're going to take maybe like a five-minute break, and when we come back, we're going to have my man Head do a little comedy for us. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come back at the round table. Okay, so until then, man, uh, we're going to play a little something that my band wrote and produced uh, called U-I-A. That is the song that you're going about to hear now. <laughs> we're going to do this for y'all, man. A little something we put together.
right, all right. We back. We back once again. Let's do it again, band show. I like to call it the talk show. Uh, we here today, if you're just joining, uh, with my son Thomas Jr. and also a great friend of mine. Goes by the name of Big Head that does stand up comedy. And what we want to do now is, man, we're going to let him give us a little something, man, for you to know where he's going to be at and what he's going to be doing because this Saturday, Let's Do It Again Band, also Vintage Band is playing at, what's the name of the club? Infuse. I forgot already. <laughs> Infuse. It's going to be from 9 to 10, $10 cover charge, man, but I'm telling you, don't miss it. Be down there. From here on you, Head. Oh, yeah. All right, now. Yeah, I mean, they looking yeah. at a picture of Chuck Brown to show you right. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> looking at a lot of stars up in here, you know. I remember when I was a little boy, my mother, you know what I mean, my mother moved me from out of the South, from out of the ghetto, right, from out of the ghetto to go to one of them predominantly white boy schools out in Maryland. And I was like, my I tell you, man, that was about the craziest thing my mother ever did for me because... I mean, keep in mind, I was living like two doors away from Ray Essence, right? Man, I was like, golly, I got to go out there and compete with them white boys, man. Man, I wanted to play in Ray Essence, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Instead of my head getting bigger, I think my head got smaller. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, that's one of my jokes, right? But anyway, yeah. <laughs> man, I, when I was in the, uh, in the third grade, I was like the head of my class. When nobody raced me when I was a little boy, talking about man, I ain't racing them. He already got a head start. <laughs> I'm talking about man, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? When I was a little boy, man, I remember right going to different establishments, and you always see pictures of God, right? And, and all these pictures of God, you always see God with in a white T-shirt, with blue eyes and long stringy hair. But y'all, when I got to reading the Bible, right? I realized that God was of dark complexion, he had woolly hair, and he didn't wear shoes. So when I was around, like, on Good Hope Road and Nail Road and Waller Place and all this, I was like, hmm, God must be from Southeast, because there's a lot of people around here with dark complexion and woolly hair, and they don't wear shoes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think this so funny. I'm telling y'all, man. My hair so big when I go to the barber shop, I put haircuts on layaway, man. <laughs> <laughs> y'all just now na- na- applied for this job at Hyman Construction Company. Hyman Construction told me they was gonna give me the job, and y'all they told me that that I had the job. They said it was, but it was only one problem. They told me that they did not have a hard hat. Or a safety hat to fit my head. <laughs> yeah, I told Heinrich Construction Company that I didn't need a hard hat or a safety hat. I told him, man, just get me the job. I'm ready. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Y'all be a size 15 hat, man. <laughs> no bull. You talking about no bull. Yeah, no bull. I guess I don't know if you want to cuss or not. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I want to keep it clean, keep it, you know what I mean? Keep it southeast, you heard me? Yeah. <laughs> it's southeast and out? Yes, yeah, sir. Good, because I need to ride home. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Another day, this lady want to come up to me to my ooh, big head. You look just like Tweety Bird. And I say, I thought I saw a pretty cat. I did, I did. <laughs> Then my nephew asked me the other day, my nephew gonna come up to me, tell me, Oh well, girl, is that your head or is your <laughs> neck blowing a bubble? <laughs> then he told me I remind him of a hammerhead shock, man. Come on, man. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> yeah, at least I'm trying, y'all, you know. But this lady in my church died last week and Saturday was her funeral. All night long, I stayed up with the boys, like, Friday night riding around. We was drinking, smoking a little weed, talking, rapping, you know what I mean, getting something to eat. I got in the house, like, 7.30 Saturday morning. Sis wakes me up at 8, tell my Eric, you still going to the film? I said, nah, sis, I ain't going, because I had a headache, y'all. And when I catch headaches, I catch headaches from way back here. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time they get back here, I'll be like, nah, sis, I ain't going. So she left, came back in 15 more minutes, tell my get up, Eric, man. She said, why you ain't going to the funeral? I said, no. She ain't going to mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how about that? You know what I mean? 
uh, uh, uh. And um, man, I tell you, I right, when I was about ten years old, my mother was showing me how to ride my first bike, and she was holding on to the back, but she let go, and I ain't know, and I was just riding, just riding, just riding. Everybody on the street was saying, "Go, Biggie, go, go, Biggie, go." Oh, look at Biggie, Biggie riding that bike, y'all. I turned around, mom's on my knee. I got scared and I crashed. Blues, head first in Mr. Johnson's car. All the neighbors came downstairs, told me, don't cry, Biggie, don't cry, you're going to be all right. Mr. Johnson came downstairs. He said, fuck, Biggie. He said, look what he did to my goddamn <laughs> 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 Hey, hey, you hear me, chat? You hear me? I'm talking about the little actor, dude. I'm talking about the son. You hear me, chat? I'm funny, bro. I'm telling y'all. 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 Just keep on going. Yeah, you know what I mean? You all right? And then, man, I'm going to tell y'all, man. When I say bump Trump, I meant that, right? Because Trump has got this country back into a dump. After Obama's eight years of dedication and tenacity to make our country jump, get us out of this slump so that we can pump. Now, Trump going to come back to more he trying to make this country great. But can't y'all see that this man is full of hate? I mean, come on, man. I was country is decreasing with no food on their plate. And I'm quite sure if y'all look up, y'all see a picture of Trump down the water gate. How about that? But anyway, what I'm trying to say, y'all, is that Trump going to ask for 5.6 bill, mil, bill, mil. But anyway, can't y'all see how much money he really trying to steal? Come on, man, let's face it. Tell them Big Ed told y'all the real deal. <laughs> That's right. So when y'all bump into Trump, tell them Big Ed said he a chump. You know what I'm saying? He's a punk. All that stuff he talking is full of gunk. It's junk. And if y'all see him, man, the, uh, my fault, but I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Channel 5 News give you goosebumps. How about that? <laughs> and y'all can clap if you know what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Thank y'all. Right, man, we hey, great man. go. We great go to another hey, break. I just got started, man. I know. <laughs> we great go to another break. I here, got man. Don't even worry about it. We're going to let the music play yeah, once again. And we'll be right back. I know I'm going to rip that joint. Yeah. Come on we'll down there. We're going to do this for y'all, man. Do something we put together. Huh? It's called Ooh I A. Y'all say. Okay. We just gonna play with you. Put our hands together up your big head, man. Yes, indeed, it, man. Really appreciate you, man, because, like I say, this uh, Saturday, we're going to be down at uh, Infuse Bar and Grill on Allentown Road, and Big Head most definitely going to be there, man, doing this thing once again, man, for us, man. So if y'all ain't doing nothing, man, and you ain't really got no plans, man, come on down and party with us. Ain't nothing but $10 for two bands plus comedy, and the food is great in there. The bar, I mean, you know, you do what you do. So if you're not doing nothing, man, y'all come on out there and party with us. Before I forget, though, I want to say that um, on uh, April the 13th, we're going to be at the club. Um, I always get the the, the, the the old thing messed up. It's uh, OTI. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be there in, in Largo. That's off of Central Avenue. We're going to be there on uh, April the 13th. So, uh, man, look, that's going to be off the chain. I, I'm just letting you know some things that's coming up with Let's Do It Again Band. Okay, so I'm going to get back to uh, what we got here on the panel. If y'all just joining us once again, you got my son, Thomas Jr., the actor. Yeah. Also, my closest friend, Big Head, the stand-up comic. 
and me, everybody knows, Tom Mo. Let's do it again, band and show. So, when we um, stopped off with uh, with you, Thomas, um, okay. you was kind of, you got kind of hyped up. You was ready to go into, you, you know. Excited, right? Yeah, you was okay. going into your, your whole thing. I wanted you to slow up a little bit, cause, <laughs> you know, because I know what you've been doing. And, okay, and I'm okay. saying, as, as your dad, man, I'm proud of you, man. Oh, For real, man, man because, you know, I done had a, a real down downfall in my life, man. You know, I don't want to get too sentimental, but, you know, I had a downside yeah. of my life when I wasn't even in your life, mm -hmm. you know, and for you to be able to come up and, and be where you at right now today, man, I, I'm a proud father, man. I mean that from my heart, man, okay. you know, and it's, and, it's, and it's so amazing how we actually going live, like, we, we never know where this thing is going, man, but right. I'm, I'm taking my hat off to you right now, letting you know, man, you, you most definitely makes me a proud uh, father to uh, see how you been moving and how your career is going and you being a man, taking care of responsibility and doing what you got to do to make it out here, man. So with no further ado, man, let's go back to the, I think the last thing you said that you did was the... I think we was talking about the period piece. Right, We talked okay. about the period piece that I did, uh, the North Star. Um, it did good. That was one of the first movies that really jumped off the map for me. Uh, it was supposed to be much bigger, but it did what it was supposed to do. And um, that was a major breaking point in me, you know, becoming even a halfway recognizable name in the industry. And then um, that jumped off another project with BET. I think that came like six months later. I did Frat Brothers with uh, Lil Romeo, Jahan Jones, um, a host of other other people. That well, how was it with uh, uh, when you did the Lil Romeo thing, man? Because I, I be seeing uh, the young brother man uh, in movies that he be doing yeah. and it sometimes seems like he be like a little arrogant. I don't know if that's the <laughs> role that he's supposed to be playing, but you since you had first hand dealing with him, what what was your your observing? Nah, for the most part Rome was cool though. Rome, Rome was cool for the most part. Uh he showed love. It was you know, it really wasn't like no big, you know, no big show or nothing around him. When he was around, he was on set, he was just Rome, man. Right. You know, that was cool, so Right. He, okay. he was all right. He was all right. He was just, you know, we hung out, went to the club a little bit. Yeah. Is that, is that the um, the movie, um, the sorority thing or something? Yes. Yeah. Frat Brothers. Frat Brothers. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I looked at that. And yeah. I, I liked it that. You did a nice job. You ain't really have a real major role in that, though. I was supporting. I was supporting in, in Frat Brothers. So I was in, you know, if you say it was a, what, a 90-minute movie, I probably was in a good 50 minutes of that. So... Okay. It still was good. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then after that, where you go? I remember I my travels with you one time. You took me somewhere because you always told me, Pops, come on, go with me, man. <laughs> nah, come on. I'm like, thing. nigga, I ain't oh, got yeah. time oh, yeah. for that. I'm oh, yeah. trying to get me some money. Yeah, but man, we, went, we, went, we went a few places. I don't remember exactly uh, after Frat Brothers, but it kept moving. I did a, uh, I did a short film, which was actually produced through uh, Terrell Suggs' production company. A lot of people don't know that Terrell Suggs, that played for the Raven, has a production company. He has a, a heart for film, and that's one of his passions that he liked to do. So uh, he cast me in a project uh, called When Beautiful People Do Ugly Things. It was uh, it actually did really good. So for those that don't know, Cannes Film Festival is a film festival that's in the south of France. They have it uh, once a year, and it's one of the biggest film festivals in the world. Not just in, It's not even in the U.S. It's one of the biggest film festivals in the world. And this particular project was selected as a, uh, like a must-see. They call it an um, official selection for that film festival. So on that film festival, Robert De Niro actually sits on the board and judges and, and watches and helps select films. So for <clears throat> for my project to be picked, and you know that was that was major. So right. I did that with them. That started a relationship with Suggs and Team Sizzle, and from there, uh, I, I went to. They flew me to Arizona. And I shot a pilot that they're still. I believe they're still working with it. They're working out some kinks, trying to get some uh, funding and all of that for this pilot. But the pilot is really dope. I can't say too much about the pilot because of the non-disclosure, but that's something else that could be coming soon, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so once again, man, I want to I open the phone lines up. Uh, if y'all got any questions, because we know we got a few people on the line. You know, we, you know, we want a little feedback. You know what I mean? Don't be shy. Call on in. 240-719-2560. Mm -hmm. uh, that's 240 240- Seven one nine two five six zero. You can call in if you got questions <laughs> for me. You uh, 
You can call in and have a question for Thomas Jr. Or you can call in for my main man, Big Head Tweety Bird. Yeah, it's up to I, I, you. Oh, you know, yeah. we, you know, because we here, <laughs> man. We here because we trying to make something happen with you. So if we can't get no feedback, then man, we gonna just keep going to what we doing. But the lines are open. So um, so after you did that right there, then then where you go? Where you go from there? <clears throat> So then there was uh, just a lot of different moving parts. Um, one thing I learned is that you can't be in every movie. I think uh, I really, I really, uh, my brand is more so quality over quantity. So I, I've been offered quite a bit of things that I probably just didn't take on. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I'm really on quality. So I, I just did a lot of networking. I did a lot of sitting back. I understand that you can't be in every film. Every film ain't going to be for you. So I also been working a lot behind the camera. So what about the guy um, that plays Pinky? Because I heard that's supposed to be your man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wild guy, man. Yeah, well, but, you know, Cliff is all right with me, though. What's, Cliff, what's his last name? Clifton Powell. Clifton Powell. Yeah, because yeah. I remember when uh, me and you went to Baltimore one time. Uh -huh, and they yeah, was doing yeah. it, and he was up there, man. And, uh, yeah. I guess he, he was still acting. You know what I mean? <laughs> he wasn't even on film, yeah, but yeah, but yeah. uh his, his demeanor, but he was a good guy though, you know, yeah. he was cool. Cliff Wild dude. But man. I but but I <laughs> think man that um and me watching you man uh go through this uh channel in your life, man, that you've been most definitely serious. You yeah. know. I remember we used to have little talks when you first started doing it, mm -hmm. you know, and I and I used to always tell you, man, if that's what you want to do, you, you know, go do that, man. Don't. Yeah. And I used to argue with you too, cause you'd mm -hmm. be like, man, I'm quitting my job, pop. Man, I'm, <laughs> man, I'm gonna be me an actor, man. I'm like, nigga, you ain't quitting no job, nigga. You better <laughs> keep uh, acting yeah. and then work and act on the suck. side. Yeah. But <laughs> but you know, but you knew what you wanted. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, and yeah. and when that time came, man, you, you actually stopped working, man, and you was busy because you was gone. Yeah. I was like, this nigga done lost his time. <laughs> <laughs> he might not call me for no money. You know, that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. but just just that growth, man, just that man. And then 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 you got kids too. Yeah. Yeah. Just two twin bit. girls. I got two twin girls. Those are the love of my life, man. Madison and Maya Bartley. Um I mean everything. I just seen them earlier today. You yeah. know what I mean. So uh, I just got me a new crib. So I had them we over there. We ain't gonna do the, M, M, the crib well, thing. No, I, I, I said that for you, reason. You, you, you I sure? said that for a reason. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Tough guy, man. Next thing you know, we be at this house with the film. No, this no, 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 no. But but I, I said that to say today they came over and they ran around in the yard and they brought mm -hmm. their dog and just to see you know. You know, I came from very humble beginnings to be able to put them in that, you know, environment. And they was out there and just playing and having a ball. And show, show me so much how they love the house, man. It was it was crazy. Yeah, yeah but that, they didn't got really, big. They yeah, didn't got big. Yeah, they'd they, be 11 they this year. They was bad as yeah, hell. <laughs> <laughs> I used to bring them to my house, man. They used to be, man. Oh my God! I was gonna bring them with me tonight, but you know, they yeah, had homework yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. To they do. got stuff to do. Don't be bringing them all up in here, man. Man, hey, man, they they take over. They take over, man. I'm trying to tell you, they just like yeah. it. They take over. Their last name Botley. They last name Botley. They, 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 they know what's happening. Yeah. Pop up, yeah. pop up. Can you pop them, look, man? Come on, sit down, man. You know what I mean? This is about him today. We'll bring them on. Time. But yeah, but um, moving forward with you, uh, Big Head Man, um, you've been doing some stuff though be before me and you hooked up this time. Yeah. What, yeah. what, what you been doing? Well, I just now performed in uh, the Mills movie theater. You know, that was that was a plus. Yeah. I really felt like a big headed style. They too. I really felt I was a movie star, man. Yeah. Performing at the movie theater, and I've been traveling a little bit, you know, and um. I'm just striving to get up the ladder. You know? But ain't it, you somewhere every weekend, a Sunday or something like that you were telling me about? Oh, yeah. I be uh, doing a lot of work. Well, I do a lot of clean comedy with my man, uh, Tim Day. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Lyrical Coffee. And actually, I was supposed to go out there, I think, this Sunday. Yeah. What's the and time? It's uh, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock on Lago. I don't have the address or anything like that, you know. Yeah, but the name of the theater, they can look it up. Everybody yeah. Googling everything right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some people Googling just to know how to talk. Right. You know what I mean? Because you go on Google, man. You I'm can definitely anything. active, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try to, man, uh, keep you busy on some stuff that I'm going to be doing that's coming up, man. I just... Uh, 
made a phone call today to one of my good friends that be promoting bands and stuff out of D.C. And uh, they was talking about trying to get me down to South Carolina real mm-hmm. soon. And okay. uh, when I, if I get that gig, man, I'm most definitely going to be trying to take you down there. Because the name of my band is Let's Do It Again Band and Show. So I got to have more than just the band. Yeah. I need a show to go with it. You know what right. I mean? So that's why I would get other artists from D.C., you know what I mean, and put them on the show. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that makes the whole name Deal fit with what I'm doing. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just like... Hey, Tom, I got a question for you, though, yeah, man. Boy. That, that name, Let's Do It Again, that's very, has a lot of meaning, man. And um, I was just wondering, where, where did you get that from? That, that, man, like you trying to take name. over the interview, but okay. <laughs> my fault, man. You know, that, you know uh, but okay, I'm, I'm with that. So, that. look, no, nah, you cool. Um, actually, um, like when I started this group, you know, it, you know, like in my own mind, I'm like, you know, I'm going to go and get my band because I've been playing with Vintage for so long. I was like, man, I need to get my own band, man. Like I said, I've been in music for years. And I started grabbing different guys from my past from Burry Farm. So I ended up getting a guy named Baker. They used to play keyboards for Junkyard. And then I got this guy named Do, which he used to play the buckets for Junkyard. When, right. You know, they was kids. Yeah. And I, I pulled those two guys and we sat down and we was like, man, what's going to be named the band? You know what I mean? I was like, man, Tom on the boys. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what, I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? It ain't raising the boys, no boys <laughs> no. my turn. You know? But I think they, they felt like, man, not dumb, old man. You know, because, you know, when you put your name out there first, it kind of make you feel a little something. Right. So they was like, well, man, I don't know. If you want to do that, Tom, I'm over at school, but, man, we probably need to come up with something else. And then dude came out with, man, let's just use the band. Let's do it again. Because we all been in music before, so now we're going to do it again. Right. So let's use that name. And when he said it, I liked it there. I was like, okay, I can push Tom o out the way and go ahead on and do Let's yeah. Do It Again Band. Now, unfortunately, these two guys are not with the band no more. But they are two artists that's on the Let's Do It Again Band song, okay. the, the, the record that we did. Right. They, they, they played on that. So any, if that was to go anywhere, they would get their royalties for that right there. But they, they're not with me no more. They haven't been with me for years. You know, things happen in life and people move on. Yeah. But that's where the name came from. I, w- I would love to take the credit and say, oh, I did. That was me, man. That was me. <laughs> but then but then when, when but then when you know the truth, yeah. you know what I'm saying? When you know the right. truth, you got you to gotta give the truth because that way gives going to make it be more. Because you always got somebody that's going to be in the background and be like, man, that nigga lying. Because they may be listening right now and be like, man, that nigga, he better say it was me. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) But the the truth is, you know, truth set you free. So that's where that name was created, man, just from those. And we all, like I said, we all came out of Burry Farm together. So for somehow God hooked us back up together, man. And when they came up with that, I'm talking about I love that name because you can do so much with it. You can do so much with it, man. Yeah, that's strong. Next question. <laughs> no, nice I guess you're done. No. Okay, <laughs> so now we're back live. <laughs> so, um, so, so you said that, um, you know, you 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 been you gonna be busy. Um, what is it that you looking? What is it that you looking for in this in this comedy thing? Really, what is you, you know? Well, Tom, I mean, to be realistic. I mean, I'm up in age, you know, so my thing is to let it be known that it can be done. Your dreams can't, you can't meet your dreams, you know, whether or not you're at a young age or at an older age. But my main focus is to, you know, be main funny and to maybe, uh, you know, give it back to my race, give it back to my folks, man. It's, it's more to life than doing that. We can do this too, though, because I realized the other day that we can't make it being positive versus street money and, you know, getting it the way we get it on the block or whatever. I realized that we can stay, put our minds together and move forward in life. Okay. But you know what? I mean, um, you you don't just do comedy, man, because you, you know, you, 
got your street hustle vendor thing going on. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that, because you've been doing that for a while. Yeah. Well, um, now, Henry, actually, I went from rocks to socks. I stay on the block, and I'm always on the clock, right? <laughs> but nevertheless, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I believe in entrepreneurship because, for real, my thoughts are uh, our parents teach us to go to school, get it, and, and get a good job. But really, the white man, they teach their children to go to school and get your own business. Yeah, 100%. And you won't be all right. 100%. So I believe to yeah. get your own business is a, is a lot better than to just go to school and yeah. get a job. Anybody, you know what I mean? I, I want to leave behind for my life. My legacy is very important to me. And like you said, yeah, I've been all day. I, I mean, I, I achieved some some good goals by selling my socks, mm -hmm. by selling little accessories and things of that mm -hmm. nature. And one of the biggest goals that I achieved was being free and not being locked up in the judicial system. And, you know what I mean? Moving, That's right. Moving straight and talking to people on a positive note. For, yeah. Okay, okay. Now, um... I, it was it was just on my mind, man. You know that old time of kicking in a minute. But, um, but um, still funny, y'all. It's like <laughs> <laughs> y'all funny. I'm a bit, man, come on out this Saturday night. Y'all gonna you gonna be out there? I come out there. Yeah, we gonna be out there. Don't nah, bro. So this this was this is what I was I was gonna ask you though. Um, do you want to let the people that's watching or listening? To know what area you be in, they may they want may want to come and get some socks, man. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. I'd be at the IHOP on Alabama. I have them come on over there and get some socks. Okay, because I appreciate it, and my children do too. Respect. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's most right. Definitely. That's right. So y'all heard it, man. Yeah, man. If you try and get you some socks, man, come on over there, man, and holler at Big Head and get a few jokes in while you're there. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because it's all about growing, man, and uh, doing what 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 your heart feel. I, I just can reflect back that when I was working, um, I used to work for Safeway for many years. And I used to always find myself going to work saying, man, shh, I'm spending too many hours in here where I could be doing something else mm -hmm. that's going to better me and make money for me, you know, because when you... When I'm working, when I was working there, I was doing so many hours that the money that I was bringing home, man, I mean, it was paying bills, you know what I mean? But it's more than life than paying bills, you know what I'm saying? So that what made me just be like, and believe me, and this is honest truth right here, be careful what you ask for in life. Mm -hmm. Because at some points I used to be like, man, I can't stand this job, man. I just need to leave this joint, you know what I'm saying? And they fired me. <laughs> so, so guess what? God is always <laughs> listening, man. You know, right. but, 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 but you got to think about. It. I kept saying that so much. Like, yeah. man, I need, I Talk need free up. time. Yeah, I need free time. I want to get into this music because when I started out, I started out in the gospel. I had a, a group called uh, Brothers in the Spirit, and we was hot, man. We, you know, we was moving around. We was hot. The only thing that um, kind of didn't. Sometimes people just can't work together. Mm -hmm. Seriously, yeah, man. That's true. You know what I mean? Because everybody got their own mind, their own ego, and their own thing. Everybody won't be the boss. You know, when you got a, a, a chess board, man, everybody ain't the king and queen. Right. You know what I mean? And, and that stuff, man, so long story short, it ended up folding. It ended up stopping. So... Once that stopped, I mean, because I did, I mean, like, I got some CDs I made, too, man. I mean, nice songs, man. I just never was in the right place to, or met the right people to be able to say, but, man, look, I think you got some good product here, man. Let's let's, let's see what we can do with you. You know what I mean? And I'm thinking that I'm at the age now where, though, man, my my whole focus is to, to get this, like, this is going to be a business. Let's do it again, band and show. going to be a business for other artists to come under the umbrella. I mean, it's about me making a venue that, hey, you want the opportunity? Come on. You want the opportunity? Come on. And maybe in bringing other people, they may become a star one day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's how we got to think, man. We, we, we just got to be on some grown man stuff, man. That Let's think about our kids. Just like my son was saying, man, you know, the things he done done, he may bring his kids over and look at him playing his yard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, man? Yeah. 
And when he finished, hopefully when he finished all this, he gonna leave something that they may end up being in acting. You never know. You know what I mean? Everybody make their own choices, but he's setting the stage right. of what 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 he's trying to do and where he's trying to lead his family into. Um, we're gonna take one more break, man, before the time run out. Um, and, I, and I'm gonna spin that uh, uh, UIA again because this this is my latest uh, song, man. I hope y'all like it. If you do, man, you know, like it on uh, YouTube. Once again, phone lines, ladies and gentlemen, phone lines, 240-719-2560. Call in for questions for Big Head or Thomas Jr. or the one and only Tom Mo. We'll be right back. Call me. We're going to do this for y'all, man. A little something we put together. say a few things. First of all, I want to thank you, uh, Head, man, for coming, man, and giving me the opportunity, oh, yeah, man, sure. to, to have you here, man, I on my show, my it. first show, man. You know what I mean? It means right. a lot to me. I'd like to thank my son, Thomas Jr., man, for oh, well. being the young man that he is in my life, in uh, my grandkids' life, in my mother's life, and whoever <laughs> else like the nigga in. But anyway, uh, I'm going to be here, man, every Wednesday from uh, 9.30 to 10.30, so... Uh, you most definitely can come back next Wednesday, man, and get with me. But look, I got a young lady, man, that's out there that's going to be coming on very soon. Um, her name is, I think it's Jasmine. She's an artist um, out of, um, let, let, let me get this right, man. Let me get this right. Mm, she's coming out of Waldorf area. She's been rapping <laughs> for so many years. She have like three to four mixtapes right now. Uh, she's a um, breast ca- cancer survivor. I'm, I know. I, I know. I need to get her on the show just to hear how uh, positive she have. Uh, she done a whole album already, man. Um, I can't give you the whole thing, but I'm just saying this. Is that jazzy? Yeah, that's that's Jazzy. Yeah, right? uh, her social yeah. media name Real Jesse James. Okay, Jesse yeah. James. Okay, Real Jesse yeah. James. And she also has a website. She she also has a website that uh, you can go hear music and stuff. You know, when you're doing something, niggas always call it. <laughs> I done told her, man, I'm gonna be all for a minute, right? Yeah, but um, funny, but look. I just wanted to give y'all that because she's going to be like my next guest, not next week, but the following week. Uh, and I'll talk more about her again. Uh, she's a close friend to uh, a family member to me. Um, but but I'm most definitely trying to, since I just throw this away, I'm trying to um, most definitely uh, bring in some some entrepreneurs, rappers, singers, R&B singers, bands. Um, you know, just I just want to like put like awareness of the talent we have here in the DMV. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I appreciate y'all. Y'all got some shout outs real fast. You got some shout outs here. You want to give out? I like just just give it out. Just shout out to everybody. So, you know what okay, I mean? what about you, 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 son? 
First, I just like I like to thank you, Pops, for bringing me on, man, giving me the opportunity to speak on this platform. I thank Vox Wave for uh, what they're doing and the things that's coming up with them, man. I appreciate them having me on this. Uh, follow me, everybody. If you ain't following me already, follow me at TJR Acting Out. Um, at TJR Acting Out, no G on the acting. Um, yeah, just hit me up, man. I got a lot of things coming, man. A lot of things in store. For the uh, for the city, we're gonna do it. But uh, again, thanks Vox Wave, thanks Pops for having me on, and uh, let's go. Always a pleasure, man. So um, I got some shout outs, man. I wanna give shout outs to the whole band. Let's do it again, band mm-hmm. and show. I ain't forgot yeah. about you, Nay. I ain't forgot about you, Tasha. Even though you fell off, but you know you still up in there <laughs> with us. You know what I'm saying? It's much love, man. I'm saying all the people that work with us. Um, my family, uh, my kids. One day I'm going to have my kids up here. Yeah. I don't think we got enough tables. But I'll just bring a few <laughs> up in here, man. Probably don't. Because Probably I do have a, tears, my, all my kids are talented. I got sons that's in rapping. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just a lot going on, man. But we love y'all, man. And from this time to the next time, peace. peace. We'll see you next week. So. Uh, wish. Oh, my goodness. Here we go again. Come on. I like to send a special dedication out to all my family and friends. Come on, wow. Let's do it again, band and show. I said we all the